One of the most important things before you really get too far into working with an animation, and actually it should be one of the first things you want to do, is to decide how big you want it when it renders and how many frames per second you want. The way you do that is with the project settings, and that happens to be located under the file menu, project settings. And there's a keyboard shortcut for the Mac. You can check yours out for the PC if you find yourself going back and forth into that. As I'd mentioned earlier, when we were looking at this timeline right here with one of our characters, there's a couple things that get revealed right away to us. We can tell where the timeline indicator is at frame zero, which is where we would want it to be on a new scene creation. But we can see that this animation goes for 240 frames. By looking down in the timeline, we can see that we've got a representation of what is seconds down here. So I've got four seconds. And it looks like at one second, we have 24 frames, which means that at 240 frames, we have an animation that is 10 seconds long. That information is controlled in the project settings. In addition to the layout formats that we have here, here's our frame rate. Now, depending on whether you're going to go ahead and just do this for web deployment, you know, if you're posting to YouTube, you can actually get away with animation values as low as 10 frames per second. Why would you even want to change this? Well, the more frames per second there are, the more information that gets packed into a file, the bigger the file gets. So if upload or download speeds are important, you may want to consider this. Likewise for the dimensions, there's some presets in here for some United States television standards and some European television standards in the PAL format. But then there's also some digital types of video that go on right here, which everybody's leaning towards more and more in terms of proportions. Then we have some additional ones, and we won't go through all these, but if you're publishing to mobile devices, if you're publishing to legacy devices or online services, there's probably a preset here for it as well. You can also control where the start frame actually takes place. In a single file, you might actually have two scenes, especially if there's a back and forth between two scenes, and you can change the render time length in your project settings, so it doesn't always have to start on frame one. You could start a render at frame 200 and go to frame 500 if you wanted to and keep all the assets in a single file. You can also change the standard background color if you wanted to. And as we get into our special projects, we'll cover a little bit more of some of these reasons about why you would and would not want to do that. There's also depth of field. Anime has a very cool ability to go ahead and create kind of this faux sense of camera where things further away can be out of focus and things closer in can be in focus. A great narrative tool when you create an animation to help guide the viewer's eye through what's important in the scene. And then there's also some specific render styles you can choose on a global level that get applied to your rendering. So you can have very blocky looking types of uh, shapes and they give you a little preview here. But you can say, you know what? I want kind of the sketchy look to my characters, and it gives you a little preview of what that might look like. Likewise for the fill style, if I went with a crayon fill style here, what's going to go on is that dynamically on render, this type of look will be applied to your animation. So it's a nice way to bring an organic, hand-drawn look to something that doesn't have anything organic or hand-drawn about it. So those types of shortcuts are taken here as well. There's also some other abilities. When we get into complex things dealing with depth of field about how we would sort layers by depth, we can add noise to the scene as well and create all sorts of nice organic types of effects that go on. So these are all located in the project settings, which is different than, say, the application preferences, which we'll look at in another movie.